Hello, hello. So, I recently got a bunch of blood work done and received two alarming results. One is sky high ferritin, which I'm still investigating. But today I'd like to talk about my surprising testosterone results and the journey from one extreme to the other. It started a few years ago with a borderline low test at 287 nanograms per deciliter and my last test result came in at 1140 nanograms per deciliter which is about a 300% increase uh, and depending on the lab normal ranges are between 240 and 950 nanograms per deciliter. Testosterone is an important hormone in the regulation of mood, depression, energy, and uh, libido, and usually decline as we get older. To be honest, this initially sounded great. I mean, most guys I know think having a high testosterone is kind of like bragging rights. However, abnormally high results are often associated with liver disease, increased risk of heart attack, high blood pressure, and are often caused by taking T supplements or testosterone replacement therapy, which I do not, using anabolic steroids, which I, despite my hulking uh, appearance, I do not take, or it could be uh, testicular or adrenal tumors. Scary, scary thought. The old uh, cherries uh, felt fine though. I had an AFP or alpha theta protein test, uh, which is a sort of a tumor marker, and also a CBC or complete blood count test, and uh, both returned uh, normal. A complete metabolic panel also yielded normal results. Um, there are other tests that can be performed, but I haven't been asked to take them yet, so for now, let's table this as the cause, uh, and I certainly hope it's not that. If not that though, what could have been the cause? First, some background. Timestamps are down below if you want to skip it, but I think the context is valuable. Um, since high school, I've dealt with fatigue and mood issues. Unless there was chaos uh, in front of me, I was always sleepy. Huh, what, 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 what? Added to it now was a lack of motivation. So I engaged in an investigation with my doctor. For all you ER fans out there, let's just call my PCP Dr. Ross. The first thing he did was to put me back on Wellbutrin. I was once briefly on it for depression and it was partly prescribed for its stimulant-like effect. Um, he also ordered a sleep study as, at the time I was 281 pounds at six foot three, clinically obese, so naturally he suspected sleep apnea. Uh, in the meantime, I needed to accelerate my weight loss plan. Dr. Ross asked me to eliminate things like rice and I asked him to go and get his vision checked. Um, <laughs> but I did end up low carb and started a 16-8 fasting protocol. The self-administered sleep study affirmed apnea and I had to begin use of a CPAP machine, which was a pain in the ass. I mean, come on, how attractive is this, ladies? You're beautiful. You're beautiful. I said, I I said, you're beautiful. About five months later, I got down to 229 pounds. Unfortunately, the depression and fatigue persisted. So Dr. Ross ordered my first thyroid and testosterone test as they could be symptoms of abnormal levels. Thyroid function came back normal at 2.12 micro IU per mil. However, the testosterone test came back just slightly above the low end of acceptable. My particular numbers were 287 nanograms per deciliter. Dr. Ross suggested I lose more weight and exercise more. One year later and the problems remained. I stuck with keto and started shifting to even narrower eating windows, 20 and four and OMAD. I lost another 23 pounds, clocking in at 206. A second testosterone test revealed not much change. 310 nanograms per deciliter this time with a free testosterone of 37.7 picograms per milliliter, ever so slightly above the cutoff. Dr. Ross wanted me to see an endocrinologist. I at least didn't need to take my high blood pressure medicines anymore from all the weight loss, and I decided to stop using the CPAP machine since I wasn't experiencing any benefit from it and wasn't noticing any new events. I ended up at the venerated Cleveland Clinic to see an endocrinologist. We will call him Dr. Green. Okay. He ordered a bunch of stuff. Prolactin, cortisol, 
uh, luteinizing hormone, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, sex hormone binding. They all came back within normal limits. However, uh, while my testosterone clocked in normal at 494 nanograms per deciliter, my free testosterone came in at 8.4 picograms per milliliter, substantially lower than normal. T4 thyroxine was also flagged as it came in low at 3.4 micrograms per deciliter. So drum roll please, my endocrinologist, good old Dr. Green suggested another sleep study. You gotta be kidding me. I have a brain tumor and it's inoperable. I win. He wants the clinic to administer the study and have me stay overnight. Guess what? No apnea. A month later, he orders a thyroid peroxidase antibody, thyroid stimulating hormone, T4 free and T3 tests all came back within normal range. Even while admitting some of those numbers were in fact low for my age, he uh, insisted there was nothing more he could do other than suggesting psychotherapy for my mood and depression. The good student in me, molded by a uh, tiger mom, went forth and started seeing a therapist. Um, but not before I, I kind of had a meltdown and against everyone's advice started a 30 day water fast. With the help of the therapist though, my depression and anxiety did improve uh, and I developed uh, a morning routine which really helped me to uh, boost my energy and focus for the day. Um, by then, I kind of completely forgotten about the whole testosterone thing. Even to this day, I wouldn't say everything is resolved 100%, but depression, energy, and motivation continued to improve as the year went on. I also needed to find a new PCP as I moved that doctor I made an appointment with instead sent her a uh, resident. This actually turned out to be a, a blessing as he was young and hungry. We will call him Dr. Carter. He ordered a few new tests that needed immediate attention I would have otherwise not have known. And kind of just for the heck of it, he ordered another testosterone test. Both the general T and free T results came back flagged in my inbox and I thought, Ugh, here we go again. I was pretty shocked though that the pendulum swung in the complete opposite direction. They were flagged for being too high. Testosterone came in at 1,140 nanograms per deciliter, which was 200 above normal for their lab testing. Free testosterone came in at uh, 20.5 nanograms per deciliter, which is over two points above normal. But why? Well, why, why? I can only comment on what I have and haven't done. Again, it wasn't testosterone replacement therapy. I never even looked into it. Why don't we look up natural ways to boost testosterone and I can tell you if it applies to me. All right, first, exercise and lift weights. Uh, I doubt it. I do exactly three minutes on the air bike. Um, three days a week is part of my morning ritual. Yes, you heard that correctly. <laughs> That's a total of nine minutes a week of cardio. Um, but I had been doing more than that previously. I also, as far as like weight training, only do push-ups for resistance. Um, 50 a day, three days a week, that's it. No more, no less. Um, in fact, if I had to quantify my weight loss, I'd say 60% was from fasting, maybe 45% um, from eliminating sugar, processed foods, and going uh, low carb, and maybe 5% from exercise. Well, you know, you go out there and you give 110% and you wanna play good and you know, you hope you play good. All right, let's see what else they got. Eat protein, fat, and carbs. Well, uh, I'm sure nutrition is a factor, but two things, um, I'm keto, so I hardly eat carbs. Weight loss plays a vital role, but the improvements in testosterone were small during the majority of my weight loss and doesn't explain the over 100% increase in my last test. Next, they got minimized stress and cortisol levels. I'm always internally stressed. Oh, always, always angry. But I was at pretty good levels for the two middle tests. So, uh, you know, no more than what I'm sort of like today. I don't know. All right, vitamin D. This is interesting. So since the onset of COVID, I have been taking about 5,000 IU of uh, vitamin D and about 50 milligrams of zinc daily. Get plenty of restful, high quality sleep. Uh, I'd say so. I get about the same amount of hours. Maybe the quality improved slightly as I no longer listen to like podcasts to fall asleep. And my sleep time shifted um, about an hour earlier, but it's been otherwise 
pretty consistent throughout all of these tests. Don't get me wrong, sleep is an integral part of testosterone production. It may be part of the bigger picture in general. I also admittedly have not needed an alarm clock for like over a year. What else? Testosterone boosters. Nope, doesn't apply to me. Follow a healthy lifestyle. That's kind of vague, but um, you know what? Since I've been working with a therapist, that sort of has helped me better identify when I am depressed or anxious so I could, you know, attempt to do something about it. It's a real improvement and it's probably a factor. Blah, 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 alcohol and drugs. Nope, don't apply to me. Okay, so, well, then between the last two tests, what have I done differently? Well, for almost a year, I went near carnivore or ketovore. Um, interestingly, I did it with almost no red meat um, I chose instead to eat like a lot of eggs, like a dozen or more on feeding days. In the month leading up to the last test, I focused really on probiotic foods and fiber. Now a month of gut focused nutrition isn't long enough in my opinion to have a significant impact on the gut, but I don't know. I also believe in aliens. Now I did take fasting to another level during this time by doing extended fasts. As I mentioned, I did a 30 day uh, fast. I also did a couple of 14 day fasts and dozens of three to seven day fasts. Um, between the last two tests, I did drop about another 20 pounds or so. So it could have been a factor. So what's kind of my uh, overall assessment? There are definitely ways to naturally increase testosterone levels. However, I don't think any one particular thing I did was an instigator for, for my T levels. In retrospect, my best and hopeful guess is um, one, fasting induced autophagy may have played a role in regulating my testosterone production. Fasting can also resolve metabolic issues and uh, insulin resistance, which are correlated with low testosterone. Along with growth hormone, fasting can specifically increase luteinizing hormone, which is a precursor to testosterone production. Fasting also improves gut health diversity and along with ingesting pro and prebiotic foods, can decrease uh, systemic inflammation and leaky gut syndrome, which is again correlated with low testosterone. And remember that the gut can communicate directly to the endocrine system, which regulate hormones. I also continue to lose weight and obesity is uh, definitely associated with low testosterone in men. Sleep quality and circadian rhythm set this crucial stage uh, for the production of testosterone, and any disruption to that would theoretically interrupt that production. It also seems like low vitamin D and zinc have correlation with low testosterone, and supplementation may improve its production. If I were to guess kind of which food had the most impact for me that I consume regularly, I'd, I'd probably put my money on the fat from uh, egg yolks. This is a general statement, but if there's an important health concern, don't settle for unsatisfactory answers from your doctors. Really, if it weren't for resident Dr. Carter, I would not have known about um, the ferritin levels or my surprising T levels. I also wouldn't have been introduced to integrative medicine where they embrace fasting and gut health. I've done quite a few things to improve myself and I'm not sure if the result was higher T levels or if those things led to higher T levels resulting in those improvements. What the hell did I just say? Regardless, the improvements were real and fingers crossed that the high levels aren't indicative of something more serious. In fact, here's what Dr. Carter had to say. In regards to your elevated testosterone levels, the levels of androgens is often impacted by many things, including levels of stress and sleep. In terms of the effects of elevated testosterone, have you been experiencing any new increase in acne, irritability, or hair loss? Nope, nope, I don't think so. Though these symptoms are not always present in adult males who have elevated levels of testosterone. I would be inclined to maybe repeat this blood work to ensure that we have elevated levels before recommending any further testing. Fair enough, thanks doc. Anyways, I wanted to say thanks to you for uh, watching this video. If you stuck uh, this far, then either you're really interested in the subject or you're a great supporter of the channel. 
Um, because of you, we've actually almost doubled our subscribers um, in the last few months, which really kind of like pushes me to explore all this like new info and share it. So anyways, thank you for the inspiration and the motivation. Um, until next time, be well, friends. Hey, let's ask Siri some questions. Siri, will having high testosterone turn me into a uh, rage monster preoccupied with wanting to put a baby inside you? I'm not sure I understand. Hmm, I think you do understand. You understand, right?